God still had stuff for them to do. Their work wasn't finished. Something took them out because they lacked divine guidance. I will do it my way. You know, I know enough now. Huh? I know, I know, I, 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 you know, I know where John chapter 5 or 6 is. Pastor preaching, preaching. Finish preaching, pastor. I know all those scriptures. This is the problem. When you lose your meekness, your humility to be led, you play into the hands of the devil right there. Because let me tell you, what was the number one sin? And pride and rebellion. And that spirit of pride and rebellion is still very much on the earth today. I can do it by myself. I know it just like you. Eh? You want to preach to me about John 3.16? I'll preach to you about Acts 3.16. You get a revelation from the Holy Ghost? I'll give you a revelation from the Holy Ghost. You hear the voice of God? I hear the voice of God. Brother, you're missing something. See, because there's placement in the body of Christ. And there are things the Lord will show someone that Jesus appointed to be in the fivefold ministry offices who is directly accountable to Jesus and he won't show you. Because you are not directly accountable to Jesus. You are directly accountable to a shepherd he put over you. And people say, no, no, it's me and Jesus. Well, you and Jesus only if you are also that fivefold. And Jesus speaks to you and he shows you. I'll show you next week. When Miriam and Aaron came and said, ah, we hear God too. God speaks to Moses. He speaks to us too. The Bible said God showed up and God said, hey, 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 hold up, hold up. Numbers chapter 12. He said, hold up. If there is a prophet amongst you, I'll speak to them in dreams and similitudes and parables. He said, but my servant Moses, I speak to him face to face. How dare you? And the Bible said God finished talking and he left. He said, how dare you? See, this is one of, and you know, Miriam was a prophetess. You know, you know what she got? She got leprosy. They locked her out of the camp for seven days. Why? Because she said, I hear God just like you. It's wrong. You do not hear God like the servant of God. You don't. You will hear the Holy Spirit for your life. You will hear, and there are even certain things about you that God, I'll show you next week. There are certain things God wants to show you. He can't show you, not because he doesn't want to, but because you can't see it. You've got to understand some things about how God placed things in his kingdom. A lot of people are ignorant. They lack understanding. There's a lot of pride and self-will and conceitedness in the body. Everybody knows. And yet they know nothing. Holy Spirit wanted to speak to this guy called this youth, Ethiopian eunuch. Don't even go that far. Think about Saul. Jesus talked to Saul. He said, why are you persecuting me? Why are you da, 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 da? He said, who are you, Lord? And I said, man, Jesus, you've been persecuting me. He said, da, 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 da. Well, okay, he had this great experience. And Jesus said, I need to tell you some things. You're going to be blind. Let those who are around you lead you to this city. Stay there. I'm going to send someone to come and tell you what you need to do. Wait, Jesus, why don't you just tell him? Why go look for Ananias? Why send Ananias? You are talking to him right here, right now. Just tell him. No, he said, no, you'll be blind for three days. Go. He said, yes, Lord. You see, by this time, he's humble now. That's, that's that mule. Right? As, um, he, has hit, he has hit the wall now, or horse, whatever. He's hit now. He has no, all this theology he had, he used to have before. Now he's, now he's sober. He said, yes, Lord, anything. If you want me to be blind 40 days, 40 now, I'm ready, you know. <laughs> and then God sent Ananias. And you have to ask the question, why send Ananias? He could have sent Peter. Oh, Peter was the most anointed man at the time. Or he could have sent Philip. Philip in Acts chapter 8 was the guy doing the revival, right? And this is Acts chapter 9. He's the guy who the Holy Spirit just took just like that. After he finished with the eunuch, and Philip just landed in another city called Azotus and started praying. I mean, this guy, he was, he was riding Holy Ghost airwaves. Why don't you just carry that guy and take him right there to where Saul is and use him? He's the man of the hour, no? 
Jesus said, I'm going to send an anointing. I'll send a man. He didn't even know the man. So there's a word that man needed. And Peter didn't have that word. And Philip didn't have that word. Only Ananias had that word. Only Ananias. And until Ananias showed up, Saul was blind. So I want us to open the door, just as I close this morning, or this afternoon. I want us to open the door into who are these, these vessels, these channels. And, and by God's grace, next week I'll talk to you about a little bit more. I've actually already gotten, in, I've gotten ahead of myself. But I'll talk to you about some of the peculiarities of the leading of God. You See, Jesus is a master planner. Some people think he's confused. Some people think he just does things anyhow. You go there. You do this. You No, that's not Jesus. The devil is confused. But Jesus, is, and the Bible says he has set some. He has set some. So unless you are one of those he has set, don't open your mouth and say, I hear the Holy Ghost just like you. Because you have been dumb. God will put a mouth, a word in the mouth of Ananias for a Saul. God will put a word in the mouth of a Philip for a eunuch. Your destiny is in the mouth of somebody. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, he says, he says something about they'll believe. He said, but how can they believe unless they hear, right? And how can they hear unless it is preached? And how can they preach? Except they are sent. So that means even for you to hear it and believe, somebody has to be sent to preach it. Glory to God. <laughs> you, you just can. You just can. That's why the body of Christ is designed the way it is designed. There are some people out there that God shows certain things. And when they talk, all of us just need to keep quiet and listen. All of us, including those of us small pastors on the pulpit. We just need to shut up and listen. Because God showed them some things. And when God shows them and we see it in the word, we should just say yes, sir. Because he told them. Don't say, ah, but God didn't show me yet. Who are you? He said, ah, but I'm a joint heir with Christ. You are a joint heir with Christ. Yes, but in the scheme of things in the kingdom, there's no confusion. <laughs> there is no confusion. No, Jesus is not confused. Look at your neighbor. Tell them Jesus is not confused. Come on, say it again. Say Jesus is not confused. If he puts a word in the mouth of Ananias, you better humble yourself and let Ananias talk to you. And say, who are you, Ananias? Have you ever seen a vision of Jesus? I saw him three days. You will be blind for a long time. <laughs> because, because, because if Ananias is upset with you for all this nonsense you are talking and he goes home then he, <laughs> I'm telling you believers have been robbed believers have been in prison hall for a long time because of what I'm sharing with you right now because of their headiness their hard headedness they are annoyed, and they don't know it. They don't hear it. People think just because we're surrounded by technology, they are surrounded by God. No, the fact that there is this spiritual music playing around you in your car, and you know it's, you feel like angels are running all over, it doesn't mean God is God is, you know, that's where God's throne is. You still have to listen. You still have to incline your ears. And humble yourself and do what you are told. And not talk about how you two saw a vision. Because the vision you saw was just for a day. The vision God sells to you through his servant can carry you for a lifetime. That is a deep revelation right there. The vision he sends to you through his servant. Oh, through look at that angel came to Elijah said to him, listen, eat this food. Because the journey ahead of you is, is long. This, this is a man of God. He could have found bread himself. Say, but eat this bread. It will carry you along. The bread you eat that is sent to you by God's servants 
is bread that will carry you for a long time. This one you pick, you pick here, you pick there, can sustain you for a few hours. So settle down. Humble yourself. We'll talk more about that.